We are now into the second hour broadcasting worldwide on this first day of August 2013. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I know we have a lot of new affiliates uh, picking us up all the time, and uh, some people are not familiar with the show. Uh, I am a syndicated radio host, documentary filmmaker, and a constitutionalist, libertarian, paleoconservative, uh, and the media uh, today calls anybody uh, who's not a complete authoritarian uh, communist a right-wing extremist. And so if standing for liberty and freedom means I'm a right-wing extremist, then I will also take that mantle on. When I criticized Bush uh, for attacks on civil liberties and freedoms, I was called a hardcore commie uh, by the controlled right-wing, the establishment rhino Chris Christie types. No, I'm someone that stands for the Bill of Rights and Constitution. And I know that Joseph Farah, founder of the Western Journalism Center and a man who, of course, ran big newspapers across the United States before that and founded back in 1996 WorldNet Daily, a pioneer along with uh, DrudgeReport.com, WND.com, uh, a, a pioneer in publishing, uh, filmmaking, radio shows, you name it, a pioneer uh, really in taking the, the old muckraking real journalism Americana-type journalism uh, and putting it uh, into the 21st century. And, of course, uh, Ted Nugent writes for them as well. Ted contacted me and said, carry his stuff as well. I don't think we ever do that, but we probably should over at Infowars.com. But WND.com, uh, and he, he joins us uh, here today on the broadcast to talk about a whole host of issues. But first off, Joseph, uh, when you said... A few years ago on the air that when Obama got reelected, get ready for the hammer to drop. Boy, uh, you weren't kidding. The persecution of Tea Party, telling pro-life groups what they can pray, targeting the Associated Press, uh, prosecuting whistleblowers. Now, Obama behavioral insight teams, uh, biopics on Hillary Clinton, CIA domestically brainwashing, uh, promoting uh, the kleptocratic... Uh, agenda of the uh, socialist progressives. I mean, this is like a Twilight Zone episode. I'm Alex Jones, the supposed crazy guy that, you know, thought all this would happen and it happened. It's getting even crazier than I thought it would get this fast. Jo Joseph Farah, what in the New World Order is going on here? Well, uh, the good news is that Obama is kind of bringing, you know, some of the left and the right together, you know, if you want to use those labels. Uh, especially with regard to the surveillance state that he, you know, look, he didn't invent this. It's been creeping up on us for, for decades, and, you know, but he's basically put it on steroids. And, and I think that there's, you know, reaction from, uh, you know, folks on the left who, who actually have a conscience, you know, people like Nat Hentoff and folks like that, and, you know, some, some members of the Senate and House and the Democratic side, have been really at the forefront of protesting uh, this this uh, just unbelievable Big Brother kind of situation. You know, they're just you know, you and I we knew about the NSA for a long time. This was no surprise to us. I mean, you know, it's been around for a long time. It is obviously it's getting worse as technology improves. Uh, it makes it. Uh, more feasible for government to gather more information on us more easily. That's what's been happening. And now you, we've got a guy in the White House who, who you know, he, he basically believes in unlimited government. That's, that's the key, I think, to understanding where we are right now. That's a completely un-American principle. Uh, America is founded on constitutionally limited government. The federal government has a straight jacket on its power, uh, intentionally uh, conceived by the founders. And, you know, obviously there have been abuses of that over 230-some years. But now we're at the point where we have a president of the United States and we have many, many members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats, who basically believe there are no constitutional restraints on what the government can do. And that's why, uh, you know, they vote in favor of preserving and, and even expanding this incredible, uh, abusive uh, surveillance state that they've created, all in the name of fighting terrorism. i got to tell you something, Alex. Um, the worst kind of terrorism that's ever plagued people in the history of the world is government terrorism. 
and that's what we're we're, we're up against in America today, uh, of all places. It's, it's it's shocking. And by the way, they try to to cast or frame what you say as radical. That is Americana. That's what the country was founded out of. The the flower of the Renaissance. Uh, that was the entire idea. That's what they'd been through. They knew that. Governments killed 262 million people, according to the University of Hawaii study in democide in the 20th century. Non-military combatants uh, deaths. That's men, women, and children. We all know this from Pol Pot to Adolf Hitler to Joe Stalin to Mao Zedong to uh, people like uh, Fidel Castro. And then we get up and say, that's tyranny. This is a threat. And they go, oh, you're crazy. But I think the good news is this coming out of the kleptocratic tyrants, this coming out of the statist, I think has finally gotten people to start to wake up. Are you seeing a giant awakening taking place? Well, I don't know if it's a giant awakening, but I think it's, it's very uh, encouraging, let's say, that this is not a debate that is strictly along party lines or, you know, the, the traditional kind of ideological lines. It's really about people who, who I think, you know, believe in the Constitution or at least parts of it <laughs> and, and, uh, and those who don't, those who really think there are no limits to government and that we'd be crazy in America to to uh, to succumb to uh, the constitutional restraint, and and that really makes it a, a lot easier, I think, for people to understand. Now, you know, there, there's this problem. Uh, there is terrorism. You know, there is this outside terrorism thing. I, I you know, me. I've been, you know, I've been exposing uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. For, I, I believe it's real. I don't believe it was invented to scare Americans. There are threats that we face in the real world. But the question that we have to ask ourselves as Americans is, uh, are we willing to give up everything that's beautiful and, you know, all the, the liberties that, uh, that abounded at the founding of this country? Uh, you know, over this fight with a bunch of terrorists? And I, I say the answer is clearly no. And I think we have an opportunity with, you know, the media exposure. Think about this, Alex. Ten years ago, was the media writing about the NSA? The NSA no. was doing, you know, 90% of what it's doing right now ten years ago. And nobody was concerned about it. Well, Americans, you know, they, they really were in the dark. <laughs> you knew this. I knew this. Your audience knew it. My, WND's audience knew it. But, you know, 99% of Americans did not know that the government was in their bedroom. It was on their telephone calls. It was, you know, looking at what they were typing on their computer and what websites they were visiting. It was tracking them with their cell phones. You know, this was all happening before. Well, now they know it. And there is, you know, if you look at the polls, it's very encouraging. Americans don't like it. In fact, there's a poll out today, I believe, that shows Americans are more uh, fearful of government surveillance like the NSA's than they are of terrorism. That's a breakthrough. Well, there's an article out today that if you Google uh, pressure cookers, uh, you get a visit from the police. It just gets more and more ridiculous. They're spying on everything. I mean, you see stories all the time where in France, somebody makes a joke on a text message and the cops are there an hour later. It, it, it's all being read. It's unconstitutional. And, and I want to quantify this since you raised it. I know there have been radical extreme Muslims since they attacked Europe, you know, hundreds of years ago, right. and then that responded with the Crusades. I know there's been Wahhabis before Saudi Arabia was Saudi Arabia. My point is, is that they use that threat, which is overblown, to, to then target the Tea Party, libertarians, gun owners. Look at how they say now the threat isn't Muslim extremists, it's libertarians, gun owners, returning veterans. That's what I said, and I pointed out our government helped organize Al-Qaeda uh, in the fight against the Russians. They helped protect them. They turned a blind eye to it. They're now using them as the main force against Syria in Libya. Uh, our government, you know, helped bring, uh, you know, kick out the old dictator of... Uh, of uh, of uh, Egypt to put in the new you know front guy Morrissey uh, who was you know many many times worse than Hazi Mubarak. So my point is is that they they are using radical Islam to take over areas, destabilize things they want, while separately using it to take our liberties away. That's exactly right. That's the way it works. And of course, the real answer to 
you know, preparing Americans to do battle with any enemy, whether it's terrorism or a more conventional kind of uh, threat, is, you know, we've always been armed. Americans have always been armed. You know, uh, that's why it's never been invaded by any foreign power, right? And so, you know, but what are they trying to do? They're trying to take our guns away. And and so you, that that get, puts the lie to the fact that they really want to do anything about terrorism. And, and there's a report out uh, today uh, that says that, you know, they've been saying, well, look how many terrorist uh, operations have been uh, uh, thwarted because of this NSA spying. And it turns out there really are only two that they can't even substantiate as having anything to do with this program. Yeah, so whatsoever. end our entire free society over something that's less dangerous than honeybees. Right. I mean, I've just had it. I agree with Jesse Ventura. I just say, let the danger, let it be there. We'll deal with it when it happens. That, that's the way it is. And if we really catch some country attacking us, there'll be reprisals. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's all being used to power grab, to mission creep. Joseph Farah, the founder of WorldNet Daily, and its editor-in-chief, our guest, will come back in the next segment and get into this, 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 this coming out of communism, socialism, and collectivism, and Obama saying, you didn't build it, and there's no tyranny around the corner, and your kids belong to the state. Why are they doing this? We'll ask jo Joseph straight ahead. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. These same voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. You should reject these voices. There you go. Because what they suggest is that our brave and creative and unique experiment in self-rule is somehow just a sham with which we can't be trusted. Talk about brainwashing. He acts like you're attacking America if you're worried about keeping the country free, saying the government is the people. Well, no, it's not. It's exempting itself from everything it's foisting on the people fundamentally, and then saying, if you've got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. And of course, we're all co collectively connected, but it's the power of the individual that then raises the power of the collective, and the individual is at the head, the individual is sovereign, not the government and the, and the big brain bugs on top directing the overall architecture. And now, Joseph Farah, the head of WorldNetDaily.com, why do you think they're just coming out in the public with everything now and throwing it in our face. Is it an attempt to just acclimate us, or since they can't hide it, uh, they're going to go ahead and flaunt it and maybe move the Overton window? Is this some move towards learned helplessness or a Stockholm syndrome? What's happening? Well, look, I think the the agenda is very clear. You know, from Obama and and not just Obama, but you know, Obama epitomizes it. That uh, you know what these guys really like and have always liked for most of their lives is socialism. That's what they where they want to take us. Uh, whether you call it communism or socialism, you know, same same difference. And a, a good example of this, right from Obama's mouth uh, in the last few days, was you know his high praise for Ho Chi Minh. Now you know we can we can debate the Vietnam War and our role in it. 
But Ho Chi Minh uh, was a communist who tortured Americans. Hardcore Marxist, Leninist, Stalinist who killed 500,000 of his own people. Now they want to portray him as some kind of popular folk hero in Vietnam, the George Washington of Vietnam, inspired by Thomas Jefferson. You know, gosh, we have known this for decades that that was a clever ruse that Ho Chi Minh used to try to get, uh, you know, the American government to support. Uh, him back in the 1950s when, uh, when uh, you know, Truman was still president and later in the Eisenhower years. Uh, but, the, you know, we know what Ho Chi Minh was, and now they're trying to recast Ho Chi Minh just like they did, you know, uh, they did in the 1960s. It was a, a communist disinformation effort. And, um, and, and now Obama's using it. The president of the United States is portraying Ho Chi Minh, this mass murderer, this terrorist, uh, you know, how, how did he, was he popular among his people? You know, Hitler was popular among his people. The way totalitarians become popular is they kill the opposition or they lock them up in re-education. Oh, yeah, I love how, 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 how in a quote, <laughs> fake democracy, they use to bring in authoritarianism, not a republic. They go, well, we have a majority that say, turn your guns in. Like, I've got to do something because a pack of idiots want me to. Exactly. Exactly. That's the, that's the opposite of, of what, you know, the, the American founding was all about. You know, protecting the, the, uh, the, the, the rights of the minority. We don't live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. There's huge differences. And unfortunately, the American people have been so dumbed down over such a long period of time that, you know, now we want to be like everybody else in the world. That's what the founders were, uh, you know, dead set against. But, uh, I mean, there is a sense that I see on the street, uh, across the board, folks understand that Obama and, and the people that are controlling him really have conned them. People know the economy's in deep trouble. Uh, they know they're becoming domesticated, but the collectivists don't care because when they shut down coal plants or pay to move General Motors uh, to China, then you've got 101 million people as of last month, as you know, now on some form of food assistance. I mean, land of the free, home of the brave, 101 million people on food assistance? That's right. You create the dependence. We've seen it done in, you know, in many minority communities to the point where they they go and they vote like robots for the people who are going to keep those those little you know uh, uh, gratuities coming to them uh, every month. And and that is really sad. Instead of being you know so teaching self reliance and uh, from you know uh, and 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 being a self governing society, we're becoming a bunch of, of sheep that are actually dependent, we think, on, on the government's uh, goodwill toward us. Joseph Farah of WND.com is our guest. We've got him to the end of the hour. we got a long 18-minute segment coming up. I want to get into the details of Snowden, Bradley Manning, and geopolitically where you think the world is right now, Joseph Farah, and where you think things are going to go or the possible futures. I want to talk about an article on World Net Daily I saw dealing with massive solar flare, narrowly misses Earth, EMP disaster barely avoided, and you've got one about Lloyds of London, warning of EMP. This is a real threat. We'll talk about that, W. ND.com article and more with an icon of libertarian truth journalism, Joseph Farah. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Joseph Farah is our guest today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have open phones in the third hour coming up and cover a host of news we haven't gotten to. I want to get into the persecution of the press, not just conservatives or libertarians, and where Joseph Farah thinks all that's going. I want to talk about a new film they've got that we're not carrying yet, but we need to, that's available at World Net Daily. Uh, made out of the book, Disinformation, that uh, is a very powerful book, and I'm glad it's been made into film to understand how the propaganda state works because of Obama's behavioral insight teams and, and how they're saying the CIA is going to be involved domestically in the Pentagon. Uh, really, really, uh, you know, signs of the fact that as the government gets more and more corrupt and collapses, it becomes more and more authoritarian. But that, that big question before I get into General Alexander being heckled, we're going to play a clip of that. Joseph Farrell, where do you think the world in general is going 
I mean, I know that we all affect that and the future isn't set, but generally, geopolitically, domestically, what is the map of the world, tyranny versus liberty? Well, there's a couple things happening at once, obviously. One is, you know, you know, we've got economic problems in this country, of course. But the, the thing that, you know, is uh, when you look worldwide, you see this is really a global crisis. So all the economies are on the, on the brink. Even, even economies that, you know, have been thriving, like in China, uh, you know, all of a sudden the, the parties come to an end here. And, you know, in the past, the United States has been kind of a hedge against the global uh, economic collapse. But now we're kind of at the forefront of it. And so there's not going to be any place to go uh, when, when that hits and the, and the dominoes fall. And so that's one thing. Then, of course, you've got the, uh, the issues of, uh, you know, I, you know I, I do believe that the uh, the Islamic threat is real. I think uh, the Middle East is going to continue to be in, in great turmoil. What, uh, what many people in the United States have called the Arab Spring is, is really anything but a spring. It's like a nuclear winter that we're, we're headed into. And uh, that's going to be very destabilizing, not only for the economy, but, you know, um, uh, just a matter of uh, self-preservation. And so, you know, I think those are the two main things when you look at the world globally right now that are, are potentially dis disastrous for us uh, wherever we live. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it, it ties in, I think, Alex, to what we're seeing in terms of the creep toward authoritarianism here in the United States and, and around the world. Why? Why now are we headed in this direction? Why are why are governments trying to you know get this iron fisted control over the people? Well, I think it's because they know better than we do where we're headed toward this great economic collapse, and I, I think that they see that as an absolute necessity when you know they're no longer able to send out social security checks and food stamps and so forth. Uh, they 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 realize that the only thing uh, they're going to have, their only response can be to use force to maintain some kind of order. And and and, and let's scary. quantify. Well, we, it is very scary. Let's quantify that. Why then try to disarm the general population when that's a hedge against letting things get out of control? And uh, undoubtedly, if you look historically and economically, the world is sliding into global depression. There's no way I can see with the current policies globally to get out of that. So they intend to make lemonade out of lemons and use it to consolidate even greater power. But, but when we talk about a collapse, what are some of those factors from your well-researched uh, perspective and your whole research team of some of the top minds in the, in the world uh, on finance, like Dr. Corsi, where do, where do they think it's going and what's the timeline? Well, you know, it, it seems like we're, we're hanging on by our fingernails. And, you know, for instance, people have pointed to, to, to Greece as kind of, you know, the canary in the coal mine. When, when Greece goes, it could set off. A, and, but, you know, they keep propping up the canary in the coal mine. The canary in the coal mine is on life support system. And, and so, therefore, you know, they think, well, that's the, their hedge against this, uh, this ultimate collapse that's bound to take place. Uh, at some point in the future, but when you look at it, look what our economic policies in this country are unsustainable. We know it's the same situation in Europe. They're they're slightly more advanced than we are. Uh, but you know, you look at the the American debt right now at seventeen trillion dollars, and um, uh, and and you and you realize you know if you just look at the num the, the number of zeros in the seventeen trillion. It should be a wake-up call to everybody, but you know, uh, too many of the American people just believe that somehow government's going to pull a rabbit out of a hat and uh, and get us out of this uh, this fix. And there is no fix. There's no fix for 17 trillion dollars. That's like um, you know, uh, close to 100 percent of uh, GDP in in the United States of America. That's the debt. And uh, so how do you deal with that? There, there, there's no dealing with it. Other, the, the only way you can deal with it is to say, well, we're not going to make it bigger anymore. Uh, we're going to freeze it right where it is, 
And there are probably only maybe 20 to 30 members of Congress who feel that way today. Uh, and that's why, you know, I started this Red Ink uh, campaign, No More Red Ink campaign, to try to get people to pressure members of Congress for this very logical step, which is don't uh, keep increasing the debt li limit, don't keep passing these continuing resolutions, don't keep giving Obama uh, all the borrowed money he needs to, uh, you know, build Obamacare and all the other crazy programs he wants to do. We can stop. Sure. Them. Well, now he's sounding more dictatorial. I saw him on the news last week go, I'm not going to allow people to block what I'm doing in Congress. And he just, on every subject, carbon taxes, you name it, just does whatever he wants. I mean, don't all the Democrats and Republicans get that this will collapse the culture and ruin their kids' future if they don't turn back now? Because, well, it's, because it's not they, debatable. They, it's funny they all say it. They all, you know, they all say it. Even Obama says it. Even Obama will tell you, you know, you just have to go back a few years when he was in the U.S. Senate and he opposed raising the debt limit. He said it was unsustainable back then. He said we couldn't go on like this. He's been saying he said it as a presidential candidate. He has said it as president over two terms now. But he keeps insisting that any, even any talk of not raising the debt limit and, and continuing this this process what is, was it is six six trillion or so in bush left now it's 18 trillion isn't it well we're adding about uh, since obama came in over one trillion a year so this is about his fifth year he's added about six trillion dollars in debt uh in five years yeah but then i've seen breakdowns that it's even more if you well, look it at is. this is that's a, we're not even dealing with the the, the clever accounting book you know bookkeeping tricks that they're doing for instance you know t according to the treasury department the debt hasn't risen in like 80 days and the reason for that is it, they can't borrow money if they go over 17 trillion dollars so they keep borrowing it and, and insisting that they haven't borrowed any money sure sure but the real numbers i've seen is it's well over 18 trillion and that's Probably. what the uh, uh, and that's not even counting the unfunded mandates so let me understand this from your perspective mm -hmm. shifting gears back to the middle east look what is the method to the obama controllers who are a lot of the same people that run the republican party to put al qaeda in syria to turn libya over to the radical Wahhabist, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 then why why is Israel uh, it, it, uh, been uh, been helping uh, try to take Assad out? Because Assad was no longer offensively messing with anybody, and then what do they think they're going to do once they put uh, these radicals in control of Syria? I mean, I guess just when they attack the West, they'll just take more rights. I guess that's the plan. Right. I think there are two answers to that. Number one, why why does America do this? Well. I don't know why exactly. I'm camp I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it does put the lie to the fact, to the idea, the notion that these guys are really interested in fighting terrorism when they're when they're placing in power people they say attacked us, you know, namely Al Qaeda. So that doesn't make any sense. My 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 guess is that it's part of some vast, you know, uh, globalist type. Uh, conspiracy. Yeah, geopolitical. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about Israel? I think that's a more interesting question because you would think, well, isn't this sort of self-defeating? Why are they siding with not the bad guys, but the really bad guys in Syria, you know, and trying to overthrow Assad when Assad offers them some stability? And I think the answer to that, this is my guess, uh, it, it, it's, it's really bizarre, but you know, I think that what they're doing, they, they believe their number one enemy right now, the most imminent threat they face, existential threat, you know, the threat they could put in Is Iran, so they want to take out Iran's support. Exactly. And who is Syria allied with? Who is Assad allied with? He's allied with Iran. And so they'd rather deal with Iran first and then basically have one enemy left, which is the Muslim Brotherhood, for all intents and purposes, and they can deal with the Muslim Brotherhood uh, on their own time schedule. That's my guess. Well, my larger issue is this. Everybody knows I'm not anti-Israel, but at the same time, I'm not, I try to stay out of this because I'm sick of it. It's a political football, like gay marriage, you know, pot laws, any of this stuff. It's just, it, it, it just goes on and on. But then people want you to like choose a side in this whole deal and mm -hmm. the obsession 
by the anti-Israel crowd uh, constantly making stuff up that, you know, Israel runs this, Israel runs that, Israel runs me, uh, this person, you know, General Jones uh, and the Joint Chiefs is Jewish when they're not. I mean, I mean, it really is a worldwide mental illness. And, and I don't get what the establishment with a lot of Jews in it is doing promoting this agenda because I see the I see the left the really pushing an anti-semitic agenda yeah. and, and I don't what are they planning to get out of this I mean this is really like a religion I don't know but it reminds me of an old joke Alec uh, where, where this guy uh, Moshe is sitting there and he's reading uh, a Nazi newspaper this Jewish guy is reading a Nazi newspaper his friend comes up to him and says why are you reading a Nazi newspaper he says well you know I used to read the the regular press but it was full of bad news the Jews control the, the control, you know, the, uh, you know how it, it's full of persecution of the Jews and so forth. Now I read the Nazi newspaper and it's all good news. It says the Jews control the banks and the media and and everything. So <laughs> you, you get the picture. He was but, reading it because it was like a delusion of grandeur. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, you're right. The, the anti-Semitism and and really, if you think about it, you can go all the way back to you know Hitler. Uh, and what was Hitler? Hitler was a socialist. Uh, you know, Joseph Stalin was a was a communist. Uh, look at you know how he persecuted the Jews in the Soviet Union and and after Stalin as well. So where does the anti-Semitism come from? Where does it emanate from in the modern world? Well, it's perpetrated almost exclusively by socialists. Yeah, but exactly. But then it's also used as this football where everything becomes about that when the world is so much more complex. Like, what about the communist Chinese? You know, there's a billion plus people over there being used by communists to leverage the world. What about what about this issue? What about the, it's like all people talk about from both sides is fighting with each other over this. And it's really a party I don't want to be part of. Speaking of disinformation uh, talk about that film a bit and then i want to get into have you seen the video of the head of the nsa being booted yesterday at the black hat conference uh there are black hat hackers i heard the audio yeah i didn't see the video we're going to play that in a minute but but uh, tell us about the film disinformation in the book well this is the, the book and movie disinformation is really the movie is just adapted from the book and it's a series of uh, ter terrific interviews with with people who are who are experts on what disinformation really is. And we've all heard the term disinformation, but it really is a, a made-up word, made up by uh, the Soviet Union. They recognize that, you know, lying to people is a, a very important uh, strategy for maintaining power, but disinformation is more than lies. Um, it's one thing when somebody lies to you, but it's another thing when a very credible source lies to you. Then it's a, that, that's, you know... The, the first lie is misinformation, but the lie by a credible source is disinformation. And, um, you know, the Soviet Union uh, had spent a massive amount of, of its economy on perpetrating disinformation here in the West. And this book and this movie uh, chronicle that. And the guy who wrote the book and is the inspiration for the movie is named Ion Mihai Pachepa, who was the highest-ranking Soviet bloc defector to the West uh, during the whole Cold War. He was in charge of Ro Romanian intelligence. He had to take a daring uh, escape route uh, to get out of Romania and come to the West. Uh, he's been living uh, under a new identity ever since, constantly faced still to this day uh, by death threats from uh, Romanians and, and communists uh, around who, the world. Who, by the way, have now basically taken over the EU bureaucracy. Exactly. And imagine, imagine yourself being this guy who comes here in the late 1970s to escape to freedom and to help the West understand what they're up against with communism, and now seeing uh, communism effectively taking over your new homeland. Well, please help and us get him on. I want to play, speaking of disinformation, the NSA director who lied to Congress and said, we don't collect any data, and had to admit two days later, okay, mm -hmm. I lied. <laughs> and then now he lies to hackers that know full well what he said is pure bull. Here's a clip of that. I want to get Joseph's take on it. Stopping terrorism is one of the most important things. Freedom! Exactly. 
And with that, when you think about it, how do we do that? Because we stand for freedom. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> but I think what you're saying is that in these cases, what's the decision? The heckler Where's said the bravo, discussion? Sierra. And what tools should we have to stop those? No, I'm saying I don't trust you. You lied to Congress. Why, why would we believe you're not lying to us right now? I haven't lied to Congress. What about next case? Oh, he admitted he did. Congressional testimony. Wait for the question session. Thank you for that. But if you disagree with what we're doing, then you should help twice as much. Read the Constitution. I have. You should too. I mean, the arrogance of that. And then he doubled back and said he didn't lie to Congress. He admitted that, okay, that wasn't true. Right. I, I mean, this is unbelievable. <laughs> you know what, what struck me the first time I heard that is, is this guy sounds like a hypnotist. He's trying to put us to sleep with his speech. <laughs> well, you know, you weren't listening last hour, were you? I said no. that. It's an NPR voice. I've talked to high-level NPR people off record. They tell them to do that on purpose, to lull people into a trusting place. I want to come back with, with Joseph Farah uh, and have you continue with what you're about to say. That's why I like Joseph Farah, folks. He gets it. I mean, th that, that, that whole NPR voice. See, I'm here like this trying to wake you up. They're there going, oh, don't worry. Oh. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now, that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. And, of course, uh, you can also... Check out all the films, books, and the, the new magazine, the T-shirts, the Patriot Apparel. All of it supports the broadcast, plus it's the best stuff out there. The Pro Pure Water Filtration, all of it, at InfoWarsStore.com. Or you can call and order or ask any questions, 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139, or InfoWarsStore.com. There's also a... P.O. Box there on the site and all the hundreds of great vitamins, minerals, and other uh, just amazing supplements, the best out there at InfoWarsHealth.com as well. Uh, Joseph Farrow, we've only got about five minutes left. I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. You were getting into all the bureaucrats now do these little uh, neuro-linguistic programming things. People used to always ask me about this, and I went and looked into it. And there's other systems, and whether it works or not, they really are teaching NPR people MSNBC people, government people, and I've been to, to Agenda 21 meetings, they talk like this, they go, everything's fine. It's like a cult or something. That's how cult leaders talk. You were starting to talk about that. What's your take on this? Alex, Yes. everything's going to be all right. Big uh, Brother is your friend. <laughs> turn in your gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 do they do this at MSNBC? Whenever I turn on MSNBC, they're, they're shouting at each other. Well, I, no, I no. Know. Some of the shows do that, but then they have others uh -huh. where they do talk real like this. No, I mean, I think I think there's something going on there. I, I, I don't know who's who's propagating this, but it is I, it is NPR like, and and I think that most people who listen to NPR are not really necessarily hearing the information that's being conveyed. You know, they're they're being put into some kind of a trance. Well, who are these guys on the classical channels where sometimes I'll listen to them and I almost run off the road. They're like, and next we have a Johann Bach piece in A minor <laughs> by the such and such orchestra. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> you, are the, you are the 
personification of the opposite of, <laughs> <laughs> of all of that. I have to get, hand you that. <laughs> now, I, I've been told by some people sometimes it's like nails on a chalkboard, but that's what America needs. <laughs> right. I'm like the Yosemite Sam of talk radio. Oh, I hate commies. Well, you're the town crier. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's we're in those kinds of times where we need people waking us up. And, and I commend you for, for, for the great job you're doing. Absolutely, sir. We appreciate what you're doing. Uh, do you think overall Obama is in deep trouble? But uh, I guess Republicans won't try to impeach well, him. The, yeah, the, the, he can only be in big trouble if there was, some, you know, some organized opposition. And the Republican Party is not organized opposition to the Democratic Party. There, you know, we, I mean, at least the leadership of it isn't. And uh, you know, I think they're about to hand him all kinds of victories. They're not going to defund Obamacare, even though they have the power to do that, just in the House of Representatives. And it has no support. I mean, take Carl Rove, Chris Christie, and others. They spend more time attacking Rand Paul and libertarian types that are the future of liberty instead mm -hmm. of going after Obama. Right. I'm glad you mentioned Rand Paul, because I think there's some guys like Rand Paul. He, he, he stands out in my mind, but there, there are a few others who, you know, are... They're in positions of power. They're in the Senate. They're in the House. And they are, uh, you know, I think beginning to send out a different kind of message to people, a message about liberty, about self-government, about all the things we believe in. Oh, it's in. scaring the establishment. That's how you know they're dangerous. Yes. I mean, they're, they're, they're denounced by uh, Republicans and Democrats alike, uh, but it doesn't do anything to, to dampen the, their support. And I think that's great. And I now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.